Andrew Moore Crispin here for Gadget TV on Butterscotch.com. Today on the show, we're taking a look at the Nexus S. You can get this guy for f about $530 unlocked, available only from Best Buy. Um, this is the latest in the uh, Google phones, the flagship Android phones, running an unadulterated version of Android, Android 2.3, also known as Gingerbread. So like I say, it really is the flagship phone. Previously, it was the Nexus One. Um, the Nexus S really feels kind of like the interim step between the Nexus One and uh, what we're hoping is going to be a Nexus Two. Um, but in the interim, what we get is a four-inch AMOLED screen, really nice. Uh, one of the coolest things here is that this is actually slightly curved. So you can see it in this profile view here, uh, the slight curve on the screen. Uh, not, really, not so pronounced that you see it um, on the front of the device very much, although when it is um, locked like this, you sometimes see the reflections and they kind of look a bit like a funhouse mirror. Actually, I just showed you one of my favorite things that we're going to get out of the way so I don't end up doing this all day. It turns on and off like, a, like an old CRT um, TV. I find it exciting. So hardware tour, like I said, 4-inch Super AMOLED screen. Across the bottom here, we have the, uh, the usual capacitive touch buttons. We have a back button, a settings button, a search button, and a home button. These are context sensitive, so they'll do different things in uh, different applications. On the home screen, we can just tap the, um, this button here to bring up the settings menu and, uh, and several different uh, options here. At any time, we can hit the search button to bring up a Google search. And we can hit the home button uh, wherever we are to return to the home screen. Speakers up here. Here we have a VGA camera that's going to be used for um, video chat. As it stands right now, there are no applications that we've been able to find that actually use this front-facing camera. You can take pictures with it, um, but it is a VGA camera, so you're not really going to get the greatest quality self-portraits, but that's really the only use for now until um, future iterations of Android come out and presumably really leverage the video chat functionality. We have actually seen some demos of Honeycomb doing just that. Here we have a light and a proximity sensor and the speaker, the earpiece speaker. Call quality on this is good, nice and loud, and uh, we haven't had any, any trouble in that regard. On the side here we have the standard volume rocker. The top is uh, conspicuously empty. The only thing we have is a little uh, ferrule here that we can use to actually uh, pull the battery back off, which we'll do right now. Now you can see in here the removable battery, our SIM cards in here, uh, conspicuously absent is any uh, option to upgrade our storage. We get 16 gigs of storage, there's only one model of this phone, it is this model. 16 gigs of storage, no option to uh, expand our storage, which is, which is actually a pretty major disappointment. On the bottom of the, the phone here we have a micro B USB charging port and also on the bottom is the 3.5 millimeter uh, three stage jack which we can use with a uh, headphone with an inline mic. Um, also uh, inline remote for things like pausing songs or uh, skipping ahead and things like that in apps that support it. So let's take a look at a couple of the, uh, the most major kind of changes that have happened um, in Android 2.3 Gingerbread. So we'll see across the top here, uh, the overall color scheme very much changed. Um, it is, a lot of the differences are, are kind of subtle differences, but uh, they, are, they are noticeable nonetheless. You see across the top, like I say, much darker color scheme. A uh, big part of the reason for that is given that this is the flagship phone running Super AMOLED. Um, AMOLED is a technology that is actually, uh, as opposed to being passively lit like an LCD, where a light actually shines through behind the screen and displays the colors on the screen that way, uh, AMOLED, organic light emitting diode, is actually actively lit. So each pixel is its own light source. If we're displaying a black, um, we're using much less energy than if we're displaying, for example, a white. We just have this uh, wallpaper here um, because it is the Butterscotch B. Uh, traditionally, if we were using the phone, we just have a, a, a standard dark background, and that actually helps us to save some battery life. So we can see um, a lot of this is, it really amounts to tweaks. The phone icon looks a little different. The browser icon looks a little different. Um, less of the kind of two-tone icons, and now adding a little, bit, a little splash of color here and there. We can see here, the, uh, that's the call log. We're not going to go into that. Uh, the dialer, very much unchanged. Um, you just dial your numbers here, just like you would. At any time, we can hit the home button to go home. Now, if we go into settings, I can show you uh, one of the neat little features that they added in. So here we see just our standard settings list. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Now, you see that little flash of orange. That basically indicates to us that we've reached the uh, top or the bottom of a list. Uh, it is a, li a little thing, but uh, it actually does help quite a bit, um, especially if you're scrolling through a long list. 
Now on a phone like this, you're not going to really notice any, any slowdown when you're scrolling through lists. If a phone, you know, I mean, occasionally phones do slow down a bit. It really helps you to know if, you're actually, if you actually hit the top of the list or if, you're, um, if your phone's just kind of waiting to catch up. Go back to the home screen here. Now we still have access to live wallpapers and they've been slightly updated. So to access all of this kind of stuff, you long press on the screen on any of your home screen. So we can add widgets, we can add folders, we can add shortcuts. In this case, we're going to go into wallpapers. We're going to look at the live wallpapers. So a lot of these we've seen previously. Um, we have the maps one, which is uh, very battery intensive, but can be quite handy. It always gives you kind of access to so you know exactly where you are. The Nexus uh, wallpaper has been, been updated a little bit. So you can see here, it um, looks a little different than it did on the Nexus One. Let's go through here. Like I say, very much unchanged. Um, only only kind of major change, and it's really not that major, is the Nexus One. Uh, the Nexus wallpaper here, we also have this microbes wallpaper, which is kind of neat. Now, live wallpaper, neat feature. Um, not very useful, obviously, but uh, if, you're, if you're into kind of customizing your phone this way, um, it is a nice option to have. I personally don't, don't use the live wallpapers because I find they, they do use a bit of our battery life up. One last thing we'll show you, speaking of battery life, we're going to nip into the settings here, which we access by tapping on the context key here. We're going to go into applications. Now we also have an option to see uh, what's actually been using up our battery. So you can see here, as I mentioned, the uh, live wallpaper maps is uh, pretty, um, pretty processor intensive and also uh, uses the display a lot, obviously. Um, even without using the live maps wallpaper, you can see that maps is uh, a fairly uh, heavy, heavy on your battery, uh, or places a pretty heavy demand on your battery is what I'm trying to say. And you can see here that you, get, you really get an idea of kind of what's been eating up your battery and you can actually edit your, uh, your use to, uh, to compensate. So let's talk about some of the actual hardware specs of this phone. We mentioned the 4-inch Super AMOLED screen. It's a WVGA screen, uh, 480 by 800 resolution, 235 pixels per inch. Uh, that doesn't um, come even close, really, to the 331 pixels per inch of the iPhone 4. But as you can see here, still a pretty, uh, pretty sweet looking screen. We have a 1500 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, as we pointed out before, removable. A 5 megapixel rear camera and the aforementioned VGA front camera. Uh, the, we can video record up to 720 by 480, which is non-HD video recording. We have a 1 gigahertz uh, Hummingbird processor, Cortex A6, or A8, sorry, running the show. And as I mentioned, 16 gigs of internal memory, which is non-expandable. 802.11a, B, and N networking, which is a nice touch. So that's a quick look at the Nexus S, the flagship Android phone that you can get for about $530, unlocked through Best Buy. For Gadget TV, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. For more sweet stuff, visit butterscotch.com.